Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting experts straight talk in your ear. These podcasts deliver great interviews with industry leaders and Zweig Group's three decades of invaluable research, leadership, management, marketing, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop personally and professionally, wherever you are. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I am here today with none other than founder and chairman, Mark Zweig. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good for an old guy. <laughs> you, you always say that, but this old guy is running two Inc. 500, 5,000 firms. So uh, I think yeah. you're doing better than pretty good. So um, listen, you know, recently we've kind of changed the format of this Wag Letter podcast, and and uh, today we're 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 focusing on what we do. What we'd like to do is look at what Mark writes about because he writes a column every week. And if you haven't had a chance, you need to check out this Wag Letter. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on because that's not what the focus of this uh, episode is. But you need to read this Wag Letter, and you need to read Mark's. Uh, weekly article. I see him come in here on Monday mornings and bang out another another article, and it's always something. And I'm always amazed at how he's able to take his 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 experiences over 38 39 years in the design industry and really distill them into some really coherent ideas and thoughts. And listen, he's made mistakes. He's done things that a lot of you guys uh, are, are, are trying have. to do. <laughs> No, no. Oh, okay. But my point is, okay. my point is, you've made the mistakes. And so your knowledge and your uh, ability uh, to share what, what you've gone through over time should help some of these young engineers and architects avoid some of the challenges and pitfalls that you have faced throughout your career. And um, so I, I I never take it lightly when I get really, really strong advice from uh, older individuals that have kind of been there and done that. And Mark is one of those been there. And and done that kind of guy and so, older and and older and yes older. that's yes. the important thing yes yeah, so Just old yeah so very old yeah um <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you know so anyway but so mark writes these articles of course based on his 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 past experience but sometimes he writes them based on current experiences and i thought it was interesting you wrote an article about what to do when your pm quits and it's something that we don't always talk about but you know what what you know, what do you do when, you know, Chuck or Sue or somebody, and I, I keep bringing Chuck up as a name and I'll have to think of another name, a uh, fictitious name to come up with. But let's just say that Chuck or Sue or, or one of your outstanding project managers and running a, a, um, a, a segment of your organization and they just up and leave the, leave the team, if you will. And, uh, it's, it's just really tough, especially in the middle of very important projects, uh, where, you know, a lot of money is on the line and, and client satisfaction is on the line. Um, you know, sometimes these, these pe people end up quitting and going and working with your competitors, um, or someplace else. But, you know, the, it, you always end up with a bunch of, you know, what in your lap, as you like to say in the article, but, I think it's it's important for firms to figure out how to course correct in the face of that kind of adversity when someone just up and leaves and you're not really expecting it. Sometimes you're blindsided by it. Sometimes you know the writing's on the wall. You know that you know Chuck is Chuck's got one foot out the door. Sue's got one foot out the door. But then other times you get that you know knock on your door. They come into your office and they send you gave you their resignation letter and just say, Hey man, I really appreciate working with you. This has been great, but you know I've just decided to go in a different direction and. I'm using air quotes here. Then, oh. then we counter offer him. Because <laughs> right, right, it's like, right. no, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't happy with you, but you're better than anybody. You're better than nobody. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to do your job. What will it take <laughs> to make you stay? <laughs> I don't want to do your job. <laughs> yeah. That's what's happening too often today in the AE business. We're right. hearing about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, counter offers, it's a big deal. But yeah, yeah so it does happen. Um, we've all been there. Um, 
uh, critical project manager leaves right in the middle of a job, maybe multiple jobs. Yeah. And I think, you know, some of the most important things that you have to do are immediately make sure somebody's doing the job. I mean, that sounds obvious, but a lot of companies don't do that. <laughs> You know, they tell the client that so-and-so's gone and now you're going to deal with somebody else. Right. Um, you know, they they uh, make sure the emails get switched or whatever and get routed to somebody else. But they're not really appointing somebody to actually do the job or, or, or making somebody actually do the job. Right. So it just languishes out there for weeks. That's the worst thing that can happen. You, you've got to... You got to get somebody doing it. It's probably going to be you. Yeah. Person works for you. So if nothing else, you need to jump right in there and you need to take over. Yeah. Uh, until you can find out what you're going to do next. Um, so that's critical. You do have to call the client. You know, the sooner the better. We tend to procrastinate on these things. If the person is given a notice and they're going to be there for a few weeks, tell the client early. So you can get them used to somebody else while that person who they have been working with is still there. Yeah. You yeah. know, don't delay. I mean, it's one of the biggest problems with everybody. I could go out on a construction job and go, this guy needs to be called to do this. And somebody writes it down. It's like, why are you writing it down? <laughs> why aren't you just sending him a text right now? Right. Exactly. And then it's done. Yeah. Yeah. You write it down and you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Things need to be dealt with immediately. So you have to act. Just act. It's yeah. just, you know, get on the phone with the client, figure out what the hell's going on, see if they're happy or they're unhappy. Yeah. You know, take a look at the budget, take a look at the schedule, take a look at the scope uh, with fresh eyes. Make sure you're doing what you're getting paid to do and you're going to do it on time. I mean, that's what the job of the project manager is all about. Yeah. Tell me something, though, um, especially when it comes to calling the client. I, I'm just curious, is what do you do or how do you respond? Because I'm sure some of the listening audience may be wondering, how do you respond when the client comes back and says, why? We, we, we don't we don't necessarily like this guy or we're, we're unsure of this individual's capabilities because they're young or, you know, maybe they don't have it quite yet. So how do you respond to that? Well, I don't know that there's a universal response. Yeah. You know, it depends uh, if it sounds like a serious complaint and they're not happy with the person and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Then you need to start figuring out who's going to take over the job. Right. That could be the case. Or maybe they're just looking for reassurance from you. Oh, Sue over there. She may be young, but she's really good. This yeah. is what she does. A, right. B, C, D. Here's some of her victories and success stories. You know, so, I mean, it just depends. I, I don't know that there's a, a, a simple um response you've got to you've got to it varies based on the specific situation but if it's clear the client doesn't like who they've got to deal with you got to change them or you're going to lose the client yeah you know I, again i'll take my experience from my other business for years i had to deal with a, a lumber salesman and let's just uh, say uh, this guy's name was uh, george for the sake of discussion george was terrible he did everything wrong. He lied to us repeatedly about materials that were ordered and when they'd be there. He lied about stuff that had been delivered that hadn't been delivered. He, he just was a, a, you know, he forgot to order things. He, he just was bad. Yeah. And so I talked to the manager on three different occasions about how unhappy I was with this guy. Not once did he ever say, I'll give you somebody else. Instead, he just defended the guy. You know, and it's like, so you know what happened eventually? You left. I got rid of that company. I don't deal with them at all anymore. I was probably their biggest customer in the mid 2000s. Really? Yeah. During the recession, like 2007 and eight. Mm -hmm. And we're done yeah. with them, you know, because they wouldn't listen and change the person we had to deal with. So I think you have to do that um, sometimes. It's just the way it is. Not everybody's going to work well with everybody else. Maybe they're a good person, but it's just a bad pairing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that certainly is uh, it, it, some 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 firms are tone deaf when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they just don't they don't listen. They don't mm -hmm. hear the client at all. And you cannot be that firm that is not open to client suggestions, of course, within reason. And sure. certainly if if you guys are part of the problem, you need to correct it quickly. 
Yep. So it goes without saying. Um, talk about gathering the importance of kind of bringing the internal team together, because I think yeah. this is this is certainly not done enough. Right. People keep right. operating in a vacuum and not knowing what's going on, even after the fact. Yeah. you got to bring everybody together. Let them know the world's not coming to an end just because, you know, George is leaving or whatever. Mm hmm. Um, and life is going to be fine. You've got a plan. You're going to take over in the short term to make sure everything continues to go smoothly. Yep. Um, things will be better, not worse. Um, you know, it, it, we're not uh, in a crisis. I mean, you, you you know, that's the job of the leader. I think is you know you've got to got to get everybody all calmed down and redirected. And and uh, you know, I think. Sometimes when, when somebody like that leaves, then other people think, well, gee, should I leave? So-and-so was a smart person. Why are they leaving? Maybe yeah. I should consider leaving. Yeah. You, know, you got to sell the company and the benefits of being there and, and, and why it's a good place and, and why, you know, I'm not beyond stating why I think George is making a mistake if I do, you know, yeah. but I, I, I'm not going to trash George either because that really makes the company look bad. And so, you know, I think when I was younger, I would tend to do that. <laughs> Today, I don't. It's just not worth it. Um, and, and so, you know, it, 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 you've got to get people and sort of alleviate their fears and make sure, too, that they're doing their job. I mean, it's just, you know, that's why I said the subs, too. We got to talk with them. We right. can't just let them be floundering out there not knowing who they're dealing with now. Um, everybody's got to be talked to. Everybody's got to be convinced that the world's not coming to an end related to this job and um, things are going to go fine. Okay. And then you also mentioned kind of the importance of building a new project schedule. Is that a, a regular thing or is it just depend on the state of the uh, current situation? Yeah, it does. It depends on the state of the current situation, but frequently that's been my experience. Right. That, right. um, you know, sometimes project managers leave because they're not doing a good job. Right. Right. And they can see that things are really go going off course. Yeah. So and they so, jump ship basically. <laughs> yeah. They just, they just, <laughs> just get the hell out of there, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, that's why I, uh, I say, you know, you may need to, uh, take a look at the schedule in particular, okay. make sure that things have gotten done that should have been gotten done. And if there are any delays uh, that, need to be recognized and the schedule has got to be adjusted accordingly. You got to deal with it now. Don't wait till later. Yeah. The sooner you can do this and inform your client that you're not going to be done when they think you are, the better off you're going to be. Right. Okay. And then you, you or maybe you can head it off at the pass. That's the other thing. Yeah. And maybe then there's you, a way to get it back. You mentioned, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But right. You mentioned that um, the final thing is that you said start doing a weekly job status report if one isn't being done currently. And you're, and I'm just curious, based on your experience with talking with a lot of firms, more than most of us have ever talked to, um, how often do you see these firms providing weekly job status reports? Not that often. I, you know, it, to me, it's... Uh, it's amazing. I mean, you know it, it, what a great tool it is. Mm -hmm. It just keeps you focused on the job, yeah. doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And it gives you a chance to let the client know if they're not doing what they need to be doing, that there's an impact from that. Yeah. But uh, I'd say maybe it's done 30% of the time or less. Yeah. Um, especially if you talk about when it's not mandated by the client. Now, some clients <laughs> mandate that, but uh, it's so important. Why wouldn't you just continue to want to communicate and show the client that you're doing work, you know, that you don't just go away for weeks with no contact that right. makes them get paranoid and worried and scared and everything. So you, you can alleviate their fears and their anxiety. You can share what you're getting done and sell yourself to the client. And you can point out problems if, you know, you're waiting on information from somebody, that's the place to do it, to, to mention it. Now, a lot of the problem is, you, you know, if you've always done this report and it goes out every week on every job and then somebody gets mentioned for not performing, they're not necessarily going to be happy with you, but they're not going to be as unhappy as if you didn't do this at all. Then they don't perform. Then you rat them out. Right. Right. Okay? Yeah. That's really bad. Yeah. Because you're just ratting them out. That's the whole purpose of what you're doing. Yeah. This has a lot of this is just incidental. It's here's all the things. Here's what we're waiting on from you. You know, Bob Johnson still hasn't given us the base maps we need or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, you know, that's that's why you do it. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to do it. And it just keeps everybody thinking internally. 
what are we supposed to be doing here? What's the schedule? What do we need to do to keep that on track? You know, it's, it's easy to let that go. Yeah. It's easy to not do it unless the client forces you to do it. You're busy, whatever, but that's your job as a project manager. Yeah. So, wow, that's amazing. So you, in your estimation, you think 70% of the firms out there are not doing this it's more, the, more of they're taking more of a don't ask, don't tell policy on things. I might be in too kind in that. Really? It, it could be significantly less. That's been the hallmark of what we've done here at Zwei Group. I know, remember when I first started, it was like, well, we've got to put together a weekly report. And I was like, what is that for? He's like, oh, yeah. we give that to the client every week to let them know where things stand. And so. it's great because internally it tells you too. If you're the PIC on the job and you're not involved in every little decision, then you see what's going on. What's and happening? You can see the client reaction. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. to things like, yeah, things are going great. Things are going sucky, whatever. It's all there. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's great. It's just a great uh, tool. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, well, there you have it, folks. That's some, some simple feedback and advice from a man that has, has, has seen his share of PMs quit and people leave and, and, and counsel and coach clients that have lost really valuable pieces of, uh, of an organization. And so, um, just want to kind of go over what we, what we discussed and just as, so it will be helpful for you is, you know, the first thing that you should think about doing is, is obviously just jumping right in, getting acting and, and getting some things done when when you lose uh, a, an important team member like a leader uh, of a project. Uh, you want to make sure you get in touch with the client. Um, gather that your internal team together and, uh, you know, spin the information in a positive manner so that everybody understands exactly what's happening and, uh, you know, why you're doing what you're doing and the, the decisions that you're making to move the process forward with the client as well as internally with the organization. Um, make sure you get out there and contact every one of your sub consultants. Let them know what's happening. Listen, this is, there's this, there, when you lose a PM, there is, this is, is not the time to you know circle the wagons and uh, and and be a non-communicative. You've got to open up your mouth and share exactly what's going on and let everybody in the chain of command and in the system know exactly what's happening so that they they see that okay, well there's something being done here and that we're we're even though Sarah's gone, Chuck's gone, whomever, we are we, you know we're okay and we're moving forward. Um if you have to, you can build a new project schedule. And finally, you know, make sure you're doing a weekly job status report. You guys heard Mark mention that he thinks less than 70, less than 70, 30% of firms in the design space are doing weekly reports to their clients. And, um, I, I, I it's astounding to hear that number. And, and, you know, for some people, it seems like a simple practice, but, uh, it just, it just goes, it, it, it it's not done on a regular basis. So certainly want to encourage you to kind of think about those things and, the, hopefully these these are some of the tips that will help you out um, when you have to deal with losing a valuable member of your team. And sometimes it's addition by subtraction. All right. I mean, some people leave your organization and um, you actually can benefit uh, from that and, and allows other individuals that have kind of been, you know, been hitting a proverbial ceiling to kind of break through and shine in their own way. So a lot of good things can come of it. Um, the only bad thing is inaction. So really want to encourage you to be thinking about that as you move forward. And certainly none of us hope that you lose any valuable team members, but from time to time, it does happen. Every healthy organization experiences it. So um, we hope that helps. And we want to thank you again for listening to another episode of the Zweig Letter podcast. I thank Mark for joining us. Um, he he is makes himself available from time to time for us to steal a little bit, of, a few minutes to sit down and talk about some of his ideas and what he's experienced over 38, 39, 40 years of, of time in the design industry. So we're really excited to uh, always hear what he has to say. And, and that's why his name is on the title of the podcast. It's the Zweig Letter Podcast with Mark Zweig. And uh, so anyway, we're excited for what's happening in the near future. Um, 
I keep mentioning that we the 2018 is going to be a banner year. We've got some great people, some great guests coming on. I've got some people that I don't even want to announce now because they're going to be game changers in terms of the information that they provide. They're so big. We don't want to have <laughs> people lined up outside to see them. Exactly. It's, exactly. You know, yeah. No, but it's 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 going to be a lot of so fun. Good. But uh, 2018 is really going to be a difference maker. And we want to hear from you, um, the listener. Uh, we know that you guys are listening to this out on a run or on a treadmill or on your way to work or or going to visit a client. And we really appreciate the time that you take to put us between your ears and listen to us. And so um, we we, we don't take that, um, you know, uh, we we take it kindly rather that uh, you would take time out of your day, your busy schedule to listen to what we have to say. And we really appreciate you, the listening audience. So we want to continue to bring you the best and brightest minds that the design industry has to offer. And I'm just sitting across the table from one of the brightest minds and he's like my Yoda. So I enjoy being around him and and, uh, it's always a lot of fun to hear what he has to say. And I'm glad I can share him with you guys. So, but, uh, that's all we have for this episode. And, um, I just want to remind you the Zweig letter is available free. Visit zweiggroup.com, click on the Zweig letter icon, uh, at the top of the page. And right there, all you need to do is give us your email address and And before you know it, writing your email inbox will come a digital copy of the Zweig letter every week, fresh, hot off the presses on Monday morning. You can hear the latest ideas that Mark is talking about. Even some of the articles that we'll feature here on the podcast are there in the Zweig letter. So really want to encourage you to take part in that. Share that with your friends. If you are in a company and uh, everybody wants to get a copy of the Zweig letter, you can be the big man or big woman on campus and just say, hey, you know what? Everybody gets a copy. And all you need to do is contact us and we'll uh, get all of your company information, the email addresses for everybody on the team, and they'll all get a copy of the Zweig letter. It's that easy. And especially the the, the best part about it is that it's absolutely free. So really want to encourage you to do that. And again, we thank you so much for listening. If you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you're listening to us, we would appreciate a review. Give us a, an honest review of this podcast uh, and what you think about the, the the format, what you think about the content. We'd love to hear from you. We want to constantly improve ourselves, and we can't do that without honest feedback. So I hear from people all the time on LinkedIn via email. So feel free to reach out at any time. If there's something that you'd like to hear us talk about, let us know. But remember, um, you know, we're always here to answer any questions that you might have. And certainly we're not like one of these big podcasts where you could never physically talk to the people presenting. You can always reach us. So we're here to help you any way that we can. And we want to thank you again for taking time to listen to what we have to share. Remember, share Sharing is caring. So if you can share this with a friend, uh, because we think they will best definitely benefit from it just like you are. I'm Randy Wilburn and I've been with Mark Zweig today and you've been listening to the Zweig Letter Podcast. We exist to make you more successful. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter Podcast episode. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, In addition to information about M&A, strategic planning, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe now to the digital version of The Zweig Letter free of charge. Just visit thezweigletter.com slash subscribe and leave your email address. Your free subscription will begin immediately.